everybody and welcome to the Be Seen interview series. Today we are interviewing Ronnie Kroll and I'm so excited to talk to him um, mostly because I, when I found him I went to his website and what really drew me to him was the poem that he has on his webpage. And so I strongly, strongly advise you to go to his website which will be posted on the replay page so that you can go and read what he, the poem that he wrote. It really is such a soul triggering piece that really speaks to the conversation that we're having today. So um, Ronnie, I'm going to let you talk a little bit more about who you are in your own words, but I am so excited to talk to you today. I'm so excited to talk to you and to be seen. Yeah. <laughs> you <know? laughs> Thank you so much for agreeing to do this. I know, you know, when I when we spoke, as far as, you know, you were wondering what you had to offer in the conversation, which is like so much, um, we like really connected and had such an amazing conversation. So I'm really excited to kind of bring everyone listening in, in on the type of um topics that we were talking about. So why don't I throw it over to you and let you kind of give everyone an idea of, um, you know, what you're working on, what you're excited about, and um, and who you are a little bit more. Who am I? <laughs> That's a loaded question. Exactly. Different hats. And, you know, as we all do, I think we walk through the world, we give ourselves different titles and different labels, and we kind of try and put labels and titles on other people and one of the things that I've learned is that I really just try and show up as a soul first. Um, a lot of times we um, kind of go into the world with a or an event with a superficial title and um, it kind of acts as a barrier between people. So I've just kind of tried to get in touch with my authentic self and connect with people at the soul level and in doing so I've found that I can just be me, you know, whatever that looks like on any given day. Um, some of the hats that I do choose to wear and the labels that I choose to wear. I love uh, the way you said that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm an artist, you know, I think first and foremost at my core, at my heart, you know. I'm, I'm an artist and I'm probably like a social scientist. I'm fascinated by human interaction and the way we um, kind of communicate with each other. And I've always been fascinated since I was a little kid, um, ever since, you know, I was born into this world. I was just fascinated with people and, and connectivity. Um, as an artist and as a social scientist, I kind of love to use my art to um, conduct experiments, you know, to get my thoughts and ideas out into the world. And I try and do it in a way that kind of helps people resonate it resonate with what I have to say, but I don't dictate what the message is that they have to receive. Um, but my overall message with everything that I do has to do with friendship. Um, I think one of the greatest lessons I've learned in life is just by being a good friend to myself, I'm able to finally know who I am, love who I am, and, and, and give that same respect to other people. So who am I? I'm just a soul in a body for a period of time, and I'm just <laughs> trying to figure out this crazy game called life. It's beautiful, it's challenging, it's filled with a lot of fear and overcoming of fear, um, but I'm probably more at peace today with all those different hats than I've ever been. I know, I think it happens naturally as as we get older, I know you're younger than me, but, um, you know, as we get older and as we really, you know, experience our own journey and we're witness to other people's journeys, I mean, shit, we're like witness to our own journey, right? Being an observer is the best place to be um, around yourself. So, yeah, I love that. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I love what you said about... Um, the taking responsibility that, you know, you just feel into who you are and not being responsible for how people judge that, like what people take out of what you have to say from you just being you is so critical in um, just letting go of all the bullshit that like we sometimes take on and, and we like to blame other people and it's just... Um, 
we can just like keep so much peace in our center if we just show up and be us. And I love how you put it about the hats, like what hat do you want to wear, you know, and how does that complement who you are at your core? I, I just love that. That's like so profound. Well, you know, I was watching Oprah. <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> and Kenny Rogers was on, and I think he shared probably one of the most brilliant quotes about self. Oh, really? um, he said, I'm the person that I think I am, I'm the person that you think I am, and I'm the person that I really am. And it's in the kind of fusion of all those three people that you kind of get to that core, your authentic self. And it's so true because we go inward to figure out who we are, we look to other people around us that know us to help give us feedback to figure out who we are and then there's just the truth the center of being balanced at your core and it, it's not based on my opinion or anyone else's opinion it just it just is i love that because it's so it's so imperative and i've been having this conversation with a lot of people lately um about you know because I, I coach my clients all the time on branding so that's one example what is what is your perceived value how do you want to show up in the world and you're right there's there's no separation I love that quote there's no separation um, and there is separation at the same time in who who we think we are who someone else thinks we are. like it's all okay and take it for me as someone that for 31 years has been a people pleaser yeah you know, I kind of grew up with the best little boy in the world syndrome yeah um, <laughs> and I say that because I had something that I wore throughout the last 31 years that felt like a scarlet letter and that's my personal orientation um, I choose to say personal because I don't like the word sexual orientation. Yeah. I think it devalues relationships to say that a relationship is just about sex. But I am a man that happens to be gay. And I'm not a gay man and I don't use one label to define myself. But I do remember as far back as I can remember in coming into terms with my personal orientation that I was ashamed of it for so long. You know, people would call me faggot before I even knew what the word meant. And I felt so browbeaten and bullied about it that I was just afraid to stand in my own truth. Right. And I let it, I let it kind of imprison me. And I think because I felt like I had this scarlet letter that I had to do a song and dance and throw a <laughs> sequence in everyone's eyes. Right. <laughs> So love me, please love me. Don't I know this is here and that you don't like it, but please see all these other amazing things that I'm working on and doing. And what can I do to bend over backwards to make you happy? Yeah. But a lot of times in the in the interim, I was not making myself happy, and right. it was not a healthy way to live. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I'm a people pleaser too, and um, well, I mean, I'm not as much anymore, but I always have been. And, you know, society, society raises us to be what we need to be to fit in. And so, of course, like the harder road, swimming upstream feels a little uncomfortable when you're just trying to shake free of like that skin and like create your own skin. So, um, yeah, I love, and I love your, you're just so non-judgmental about yourself and others. I love that about you. You're it's like, taken a long time to get there. <laughs> you're just like beautiful, pure soul. <laughs> <laughs> it's taken a long way to get there. And, you know, I think it's a daily commitment. You know, we're all imperfect people. And we're all capable of light. And we're all capable of darkness. And it's just, right. which one do we choose to feed? And, and every morning when we wake up, it's a commitment. And every you know night before we go to bed, to say thank you for everything and not to take anything for granted. Because I've learned one thing is for sure: everything that you think you have, your security blanket, everything that is a given, might not be there tomorrow. Right, right, very true. And gratitude is such an important key and piece to who we are and how to stay present and how to actually feel like you're living an abundant life because if you um if you if you just get sucked into your to-do list and the sorrows of what you're experiencing and the challenges and everything is so hard um you really 
will lose track of what's actually happening in reality around you and the beauty that is conspiring to show itself. And it just, um, it's sad. And not that I've not gotten trapped into negativity myself, of course, you know. Um, it's just, you know, when that happens, I fight like hell to dig out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, we can all have our, like, 10-minute or, like, half-day pity parties where exactly. we just want to put the covers over our head <laughs> and eat a carton of ice cream or five, but, you know, it's, uh, you can't stay there, you can't let it win, you know? Right. Exactly. Um, I think it's so important to, uh, to move out of that negative headspace and to slow down and take a moment to breathe and just to appreciate, you know? Yeah, exactly. Um... You know, and in that, I want you to share with everybody a little bit about um, about your background story because I know we we have gotten to know each other previously, and um, on our call, and we had talked about New York, and I know both you and I had talked about New York giving us our backbone. <laughs> um, so talk talk to everyone a little bit about that because. You know, you were modeling, and there was a lot of visibility that you were experiencing during that growth transition for yourself. So um, let us hear, like, a few lessons and a few things that you learned in that whole transition period. Well, I like to say it this way, that my hometown of Chicago is my heart. I was born and raised there. My family is there. A lot of my friends are there. And the Midwest kind of attitude, you can, like, take the boy out of Chicago, but you can't take the Chicago out of the boy or the man now. Right. <laughs> I'm calling myself a boy. Um, <laughs> but Chicago is my heart. And I had an incredible opportunity to follow a dream of mine in the modeling world. Um, by being blessed to be cast on a reality TV show uh, called Bravo's Make Me a Supermodel. And it took me to New York City, and I kind of got thrown into the world of high fashion and walking catwalks and doing campaigns and being in one of the most multiculturally diverse, fun, but also very challenging cities in the entire world, New York City. Yeah. <laughs> um, it can really beat you up. So if Chicago was my heart, New York definitely became my backbone. And it taught me what I was capable of. Mm -hmm. You know, I never use the word problem anymore because problem is negative. Uh, I've learned to, if I say it, to quickly switch the word to challenge. And New York was very challenging. Um, but going through those challenges, if I had never gone through them, I wouldn't be the person that I am sitting with you and talking with everyone today because it really showed me that I could go through the fire, come out the other side, and maybe I've got a few scrapes and scars and burns, but I'm the better for it and I've learned something. Um, and so if New York is my backbone, LA is now my voice and I've traveled west to become a producer and an actor. Um, I'm now an entrepreneur with my own company, but I'm finding my voice and I'm trying to piece together all of the experiences that I've had, all the people that I've met, and um, create a platform to really give back and teach. You know, if, if nothing else, I'm here on this planet to just, we're all here to learn and to teach, and we're all learning our lessons in different ways. Um, but I, I think anything in life worth having or going after you're going to be facing challenges. Because if it was easy, you wouldn't learn, and uh, everyone would be doing it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's like one of my favorite quotes. And I don't know who said it. If this shit was easy, everyone would be doing it. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't, you know, going back to like shifting the conversation from problem to challenge, I don't like the word failure either. I think right. failure is such a, a horrible word. And the closest thing we can get to magic in this lifetime is words, because words are so powerful, especially in our self-talk. If we say we can't do something, we're not going to be able to do it. We've decided it. So before you even get out into a world filled with very disgruntled people wanting to squash your dreams and want to keep you down, um, you've already done the job for it, for them. So, so I don't let any of my friends get away with saying I can't do something or I'm so stupid. Even if it's like joking in a moment, I'll say, hey, my friends aren't allowed to talk to themselves that way. <laughs> sometimes they take a step back and they're like, what? And, and I'm like, no, 
you wouldn't let anyone else talk to you like this. At least I wouldn't let anyone talk to you like that. So you're not allowed to either. And you'll notice a shift in your energy and what kind of energy gravitates towards you if you just decide to be positive or shift the connotation just ever so slightly from something negative to positive. Yeah. It's funny because, like, even the most random acts of kindness and that I love that you say that and I've actually experienced what you just said you do with your friends on another level too I I think um it one something I'm a part of I thought was on auto pay so I missed a payment and I called and I was like oh my gosh like just stupid of me and um she was like hey don't talk about my client like that and I was like <laughs> I don't even know you, but that's pretty cool. <laughs> it is. You know, I think um, we have to love ourselves first. And in those moments, we may not even realize what we're saying, but our brains are supercomputers. They are supercomputers, and we're the programmers. So if you're programming that negative HTML code in there, yeah. then that's exactly what you're going to get. Um, it, it's so simple, and it's so complex at the same time. Yeah. Because, you know, we have, um, we have, I want to say I read that there, we think 80,000 thoughts a day, and 80% of them are negative. Oh. 80% are negative. That's how we're programmed. And that if we could so just crazy. shift that. Yeah. Imagine that. Our subconscious that. mind is a sponge, and we forget about it. And, you know, before you even know it, you're subscribing to something that you didn't even realize you were telling yourself. And I love that you say that about the self-talk because we all do it. Like, I catch myself all the time, like, be, like talking to myself so negatively. And I'm just like, what? Just stop. Just stop. <laughs> <laughs> it's when I answer myself negatively, too, and I have to banter back and forth. That's when it's really dangerous. <laughs> exactly. But my assistants really think I'm crazy. <laughs> you, know, you know, when I find myself in those negative spaces and I have those weak moments, um, the best thing that I've been able to do is I take myself out on a date. And oh, I know nice. it sounds silly, but sometimes we need to be alone with our thoughts and we need to find peace and solace away from the madness, away from routine and all that. So I'll either, even if that date night for me is sitting in the, the tub with a candle lit and some music or it's go to see a movie by myself or take myself out to a restaurant, a lot of us are afraid to be with our own thoughts because we're afraid of what might bubble up. And the cool thing is we can be our own best therapist because when we are with our own thoughts, the answers bubble to the surface, right. but we don't always want to hear the answers, or we don't always like the answers. So a lot of us will turn to finding a distraction. I personally, over the years, have tried to find and help fix other broken birds out there with other <laughs> problems and feel like I can come save the day, right. and my ego comes in and it's like, yes, I've got a project, and meanwhile, <laughs> while I'm busy with your problems, I've neglected my own. <laughs> right. <laughs> It's bright. The it's part of the bright shiny object syndrome. It is, and like, I do oh. like diamonds. <laughs> <laughs> Anything sparkly is fine with me. <laughs> Especially souls around you. Yes. <laughs> um, okay. Awesome. Let's um, let's dive into talk to me about the importance of connection in vis visibility and create a f creating a following? Mm, it's a wonderful question because I think a lot of times we project images of ourselves out there in the world. Um, there's a certain portion of it that you can control, yeah. kind of. Yeah. Um, it's kind of an illusion at the same time, but there, you can't control also people's perception of you. Um, especially in social media, it's kind of a beast. Right. Um, but I think if you can, if we can all make a commitment to ourselves in any given moment to be our most authentic self, to not try and predict what people expect from us or want from us or need from us, but just to be in the moment, to be authentic and do our best to connect with people and not be so quick to judge. 
Um, Because it's really easy to go the negative route again. It's so easy to go negative and judge someone and feel like you're better or superior. Um, But when you're only focused on what you know, you're missing out on so much of what you don't know. Um, And I think, you know, in in our communication with each other, having those authentic connections help us dig beneath the surface. A lot of us are really comfortable staying you know, Ellen DeGeneres does a great stand-up, you know, where she talks about, we've just, we've got too busy to order, and we've got a coffee shop here, and a coffee shop here, and we don't have time for anyone. We're passing each other on the street. We ask, how are you doing? But we really don't care. Right. We don't want the answer. We just want the answer to be, oh, I'm great, everything's fine. But what happens if someone says, I'm not doing so great? And Ellen jokes, oh, man. <laughs> What's wrong? I don't have the time for this. You know, there's an element of human compassion that I would love to see us get back to with just recognizing that, again, we're all souls living in a body for a time. And if we could stop being so judgmental of how we look and what religion we practice and who we love, we could actually find that we would, our lives would be so much more enriched. And that's what I try and do with my own personal branding. Um, And also with my company's uh, branding friend movement, I try to just put those positive experiences out there. I try and be as open and authentic in my communication as possible. And, you know, I've learned so much more than I could ever teach just by moving through the world that way. Nice. I love that. Um, And I I think I saw that stand-up of Ellen, too. And it's, it's so true, and I've always remembered that. So whenever anyone asks me now, how are you doing? I'm just like, um... Good. <laughs> and then I just wait to know, like, are they really asking or are they just, is that just a little greeting, right? Like, because unfortunately, how you doing has become like a greeting instead of right. a real question, you know? Well, and also in answering that question truthfully, you have, one has to allow themselves to be very vulnerable, right. which is equally as scary as being by yourself and being with your own thoughts because being vulnerable to someone especially if we've had bad experiences in the past with people that have maybe judged us or hurt us. Um, Again, going back to the supercomputer, I'm meeting you for the first time. You're very lovely. We're having a great time. And all of a sudden, you show up in the world and do or say something that triggers something from the past. Right. And I can project that onto this new amazing situation and ruin what this could be. But in that moment then I would shut down and I would ruin it that way or I would automatically accuse you of being exactly the person that hurt me in the past. It's not fair to you. It's not fair to me. And to be vulnerable says I'm willing and okay with if I get hurt, you know, because by being willing and open to being hurt, you're also being willing and open to be loved. And when we close ourselves off, you know, it's a very lonely kind of existence. Yeah. It's funny because I was um, talking to a friend the other night and we were talking about opening ourselves up to love and all that, you know, life has to offer us. And it reminded me of the movie uh, Love Actually. Oh, that that was a great film. When the little kid was like so in love with his girlfriend at school and um, they were leaving and he said something like, let's go get the shit kicked out of us by love. (laughs) (laughs) Love can be, you know, it can be painful. It's growing pains, just like anything else. When I'm at the gym and I'm pumping the iron, you have to tear the muscle in order for it to grow back stronger. Right. I think the same is true of emotions, because we're all on our own learning curve, you know. Exactly. I hear you. So, you know, along those lines, I want to talk about fear and limitation. Um, Um... How it so severely affects us, um, you know, not leaving our mark on the world the way we want or, you know, not making a difference in the lives of others and how it really kind of holds us back from creating the legacy that we want to create in our lives. Talk to me about that, fear and limitation. Well, I think as we all know, we live in a world filled with fear. You know, anytime I turn on the television or open up my computer, there's some tragic story being sensationalized by the media. 
And one could think that the world is really such a horrible place uh, because so many positive stories and good messages are kind of falling by the wayside because they don't get ratings or views or sponsor money because of it. Um, so we, we live in a, in a place of fear. Our governments tend to push those fear buttons because they know they can get us to move and act without asking questions. Right. Um, we're being dumbed down as a society. You know, I remember reading from cover to cover the New York Times, the Chicago Sun-Times and Tribune, and kind of looking for my media and news from all different sources. And now we get, we talk in sound bites, you know, yeah. um, little Twitter feed messages or just blurbs. And um, I feel like we're a bunch of sheep, you know, <laughs> we yeah. have become, you know, this way. And so if we want to move outside of fear and we want to really make a difference in our lives and leave our mark, first and foremost, we have to be doing it for ourselves, you know, not to please anyone else, not to have some legacy, but just because we're genuinely tickled by the work we're doing, the interactions we're having. Um, we have to challenge ourselves to read, to learn more, and not just take things for face value, but we have to ask more questions. Because fear, I was once told, is an acronym for false evidence appearing real. Mm -hmm. And we have to put on our little scientist cap and do a little investigation because we could believe it for face value. <laughs> I was sitting here the other day, and my business partner had gotten a message from one of his friends that said Thai Beanie Baby had filled all of their Beanie Babies with brown recluse spider eggs, you know, <laughs> to make it plush and soft and that they're all hatching now. <laughs> and he came rushing into the office and he was like, Ronnie, you have to bag all of your Beanie Babies and you have to make sure that, you know, they're far away from us so that we don't get bit. And I was like, wait, wait, wait a second. I don't think Thai Beanie Babies would bite her eggs. Right. It would damage their reputation. Their so I was like, did you do a little research? Let's research this together. And it was such a cool moment for us as a team and to like explore um, any of the work we're doing in the world and anything we're teaching. Um, it wouldn't be effective unless we learned it and went through it ourselves. So I think asking more questions, just being curious, you know, can help you navigate challenges and, um, again, kind of, you'll be living and enjoying your life rather than just existing. And um, you'll be inspiring people every day. Um, yeah, we're just on our own journey. And I think overcoming those obstacles and, and realizing we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. If we die tomorrow, we don't know what's going to happen. It's not promised to us. You know, I have a couple of friends, one in particular, her name is Sarah Mento, and she's living with stage four cancer. And she's got a family to provide for that she loves dearly, and she is so ill. But she's chosen to live her life in a way that is an inspiration to everyone that's fighting with that challenge or any other challenge because life is beautiful. It's what we make of it. And sometimes we take it for granted. So go out there and take risks. Now I'm not saying don't calculate the risk. Think about it. Be smart about it. Um, but go out there and take risks. The worst that can happen is you can fall. You know, you're not going to fail. You're going to fall. You'll dust yourself off. You'll learn a new lesson. And maybe you'll take a new approach. And if that doesn't work, you'll take another approach. Um, you have to have tenacity above all else. That's it, tenacity. Yeah, and I do believe, too, that sometimes when we fall, it teaches us such a lesson that we would have never gotten to the goal if we hadn't had gone through that. And when you get to the goal, it's far more rewarding to know that you made it through all of these different challenges and obstacles and learn something about yourself. Right. And right. had all of these life lessons so that you could really celebrate it. Um, it wasn't just handed to us. You know? exactly. And I don't think the universe hands us anything that we're not deserving of uh, or worthy of. Um, <clears throat> but first we have to believe it. Right. Like, and align with it, like energetically and, you know, in your mindset. There, there's like so much alignment that needs to happen because a lot of times too, you know, on like a small scale, it's like when you're looking for something and you think it's gone, 
but it's actually right in front of you and you can't even see it, right? Like how many times have we done that like with our keys? Well, the same thing happens on such a big scale where it, you think that you don't have access to something, but you just have to like open your reality and your awareness around the fact that it does exist. I can see it. And oh, it's right there. <laughs> but our egos too get involved and in, in, in get in the way because we feel like we know exactly how it's supposed to happen. This is right. the way it's supposed to be. This is how it's going to show up in the world. And a lot of times our prayers or our wishes to the universe are answered, but they just don't come in the package that we plan on it coming in. Most times they don't, right? <laughs> so it'll show up and it'll be right here in your face and you're looking here, you're looking here, you're looking up, you're looking down. And right. then eventually when you finally, you know, if the universe tries to teach you the lesson, it slaps you in the face the first time, it'll punch you in the gut the second time. And by the third time you're on the ground and if you haven't learned it, you know, you're in trouble, but it's like, um, all of a sudden you have that enlightening moment, that eureka moment, and it's like, oh my God, it's been right here the whole time. Yeah. You know? Um, it's funny because I like to talk about, um, when, when, I, when I moved out here from New York, um, I was trying to figure out what car I wanted, and I swore I want, I want, I really wanted a Mini Cooper. I just thought that that, like, like, small, stylish, like, you know, I think that that will, like, feel good driving. And I test drove one, and I was like, that's so weird. I just don't feel like it's my car, but I really wanted one. And um, and I didn't give it out. The new models were coming out, so I waited, and I was going to go and test drive them. And in the meantime, I got a puppy. And without even aligning the two, like, I took pictures of him and, like, put it on Facebook. And then I called the album my Mini Cooper, and I was like, oh, my God. Mini Cooper was never a car. Oh. Oh. <laughs> it was a little puppy dog. Oh. I love that. I'm such an animal person. My cats are my everything. Yeah. Joking, I jokingly always say hashtag cat lady on my social media <laughs> posts because I'm a total cat lady. <laughs> I love that. That is so funny. <laughs> but yeah, like a lot of times because I... I believe we actually get everything that we ask for. We just don't realize, speaking of, he's not talking Cooper? about him. <laughs> he's not so mini anymore. <laughs> um, I do believe we get everything that we ask for. It's just unfortunate that a lot of times, like you previously said, you know, our mind just like wanders, wanders, wanders. It's like, repeating, you know, HTML and writing new, and we don't even realize sometimes what we're asking for, and we get something, and we're like, that's weird, but if you really were open and honest with yourself, and you trace back, like, your thoughts, you'd be like, oh, right, I wanted this, and I didn't actually step up and do it for myself, so this is how it showed up. <laughs> well, you know, we're all half responsible for what happens to us. But it's so easy to play the victim role like we were talking about earlier. And once, you know, this one of my mentors actually taught me this. His name is H. Um, but I do remember, like, back in Chicago, he would say, Ronnie, you need to step up. And you need to own half responsibility. So if someone's treating you a way that you don't want to be treated, if you're in a situation, whether it's a job or a relationship or what have you that you're not happy with, you have to ask yourself, if you're going to point a finger of blame, make sure you're pointing one at yourself, too, and really think about what you did, what you didn't do, and what your words or your silence actually brought to the table to get you where you are. Um, and we forget that sometimes, you know? We totally forget that, because, I mean, that's, that's having to look at our own shit. <laughs> <laughs> and no one wants to do that. No. Um... <laughs> Yeah, the taking responsibility, I, I'm completely with you there, and I'm so happy that you brought that up, so let's talk about that a little bit more, sure. um, because I was going to go into inner battles, which we've already been, you know, discussing, but this goes into that too, it's just like, um, and I love what you said, that was a really um, beautiful point about your silence, because a lot of times we just think that, you know, our words or our actions are what counts, but honestly, our silence counts too. Um, and 
I, I remember I had gone out to have drinks with a few friends and it was my friend and two of my friends and one of them brought one of their friends. And um, this guy was nice and he just, like, I could just tell that he, like, loves to debate and, like, get people fired up and just, like, <laughs> talk about all the stuff we're not supposed to talk about, religion, politics, you know, all that stuff. And I just, like... I'm not, like, a big debate girl, and I just was, like, letting them, like, but my other friend was, so they were, like, going at it, like, in a fun way, no one was getting mad, but I just wasn't really interested in being part of the conversation, it just didn't, like, I was just going to let them have fun with it, and I'm okay sitting back and not being a part of a conversation, and my friend had gotten up to go to the bathroom, and he turned and he looked at me, and he said, so what, you have no opinion about anything? (laughs) <laughs> and I just paused and I looked at him and I smiled and I said, that's so funny that you're judging me as being unintelligent and not having an opinion when I'm actually not interested in having the conversation and I'm learning a lot about you as you're having it and I'm watching you. Wow. And he was just like, oh, but like, you know, I could have totally caved and then gotten mad at him for being a jerk to me. But instead, I really just like, I was like so solid and clear in, you know, what my role was at that moment that I was able to like speak it, you know, fluently. What, what an incredible way to communicate. You yeah. Know? It's just he had like, his own perceptions that yeah. he miscalculated based on your intentions and you were able to share no that. That may be your perception, but this is what was really going on. And you taught him something in that moment. Yeah, it was it was really funny. And even after I said it, I was like, oh, that was cool. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't know where that came from, but <laughs> I like it. I believe it. That's how I really felt. So good. <laughs> and you stood up for yourself in that moment, too. You yeah, know. and you don't have to be harsh or mean to stand up for yourself. You just have to know who you are and really just even, like energetically or with the tone of your voice or your body language really just like set a boundary there like you're not penetrating this right now like I'm not buying into the drama that you want to create and I'm okay with that <laughs> not my circus not my monkeys <laughs> as they <laughs> say <laughs> exactly <laughs> exactly so I love what you said about the silence piece too Yeah, silence is very powerful in a lot of different ways. I mean, silence, if you're walking through the workplace or the school and you see someone being bullied, you know, um, and you don't stand up, that silence is very powerful. Sometimes I feel like that's equally as kind of offensive as doing the bullying as well. I agree. Um, Silence when even some of... Actually, we have a blogger. um, Her name is Felicia, and she's just going to start writing for Friend Movement. And she wrote a beautiful piece we're going to publish that talks about her observations in her circles of friends when we're kidding around with each other. And when have we, when we're kidding around with each other, how far is too far and how much is too much and how much is really fun and we're all laughing and how much is, are you jabbing someone without even knowing it? And she talked about even our silence amongst our peers, our groups of friends, when they are making fun of us, if we don't pipe in and say, hey, that didn't feel good or hey, that hurt, and let them know, and they continue to do it, the silent one can tend to erupt like a volcano and become this angry, very <laughs> this person, which right. I know from holding on to things, I've lashed out before, we've had those moments, and then we want to make it all about how it's their fault, but we didn't at one time even say, hey, you know, that really doesn't feel good, and right. you know, it hurts. Yeah, it's true. I mean... Um... I I don't know when I learned that lesson, but I did learn that lesson early. And so, yeah, like I don't really hold on to a lot of bitterness. And because if, if someone triggers me or, first of all, I take a moment to like really think about why I'm getting triggered. But if someone says something that really upsets me or offends me, I just immediately ask, like, what what did you mean by that? Because this is how I took it. 
And right. then they and then they actually have a chance to be like, oh my god, no, that's not what I meant at all. What I meant was this, or, um, yeah, you know, I guess that now that you say that, it was a little harsh. I'm sorry, and it's like, okay, cool. Or yeah, I did mean that. <laughs> <laughs> I did you mean it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so that. <laughs> That's when you're like, bye, Felicia. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Ain't nobody got time for you. <laughs> right. But yeah, it's a, you know, it's a good point because I see so many people just like take attitudes and behaviors that they don't like and they will wait and wait and wait and it's like, I don't know, you should say something if you're not happy about that. Because it's never going to be good when it erupts. And so it's just... I think just... the other thing that we should mention here is that you can debate and you can have conversations about facts, you know. But when it comes to the human emotion, it's a roller coaster. And in any given moment, you could be really, really happy. And the next moment, you could get really angry about something. But just acknowledging that human emotion is there... Right. It's ever fluctuating, and sometimes we say and do things that we wouldn't do if we were in a happier place, but we have those weak moments. And I think even if you are on the receiving end of someone that's coming at you, instead of going in the victim mode, realize that they're in an unhealthy kind of weak moment and, um, and kind of acknowledge that rather yeah. than like, you said you could have easily met that person and kind of went head to head and kind of met them where they were comfortable. But if you can take a step back and realize that we all make mistakes, that we all get into those emotional roller coaster moments, and um, you know maybe sometimes you just have to press pause. Sometimes you just have to say let's agree to disagree and come back to it when we're both we've both had time to think about it. Um, communication is key in any kind of relationship. And all too often, sometimes we just throw our hands up and we let our ego get the best of us. And we're like, fine, then we're done. We're not friends anymore. <laughs> we're getting a divorce. Or, you know, um, so many people give up on each other. You know, we're so lazy. <laughs> giving up so on each other. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It's so true. That is such an amazing point because it really is just like if you take a breath, take a step back, realize what your role is and what's unfolding. And, you know, like sometimes now, like I just like to warn people, like if I'm around friends or, and we're like having a conversation or I need someone's advice, I'll be like, just so you know, I'm a little sensitive today. Yeah. <laughs> a little bit more than usual. So, you know, I can't take the feedback like I normally can, so just <laughs> sugarcoat it a little bit for me. <laughs> or in my office, I'll be like, I haven't eaten anything and I'm hangry. <laughs> my business partner will be like shoving a hamburger in my face. Like. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, I'm, I'm glad you brought that up because we're almost out of time, but let's talk about self-nurturing because um, I think that that's such an important piece, too, to really, like, showing up 100%. Because I do the same thing. Like, nobody's happy to be around me if I'm hungry. Like, I get grouchy and not so happy and a little more sensitive. And so, like, I forget sometimes that it's really important for me to take care of myself first so that I can actually show up the way I want to for people. That is one of the hardest lessons to learn in life. <laughs> At least for me, it has been. You have to nourish yourself. And in our constantly busy, um, you know, connected world of busyness and responsibilities and the economy the way it is and frustrations, like, you have to, like, in your calendar book, whether you do it electronically or, like me, the old-fashioned way, I like to cross things off. Um, but you have to put it in the schedule to take even 10 minutes to meditate or nourish your body with food or go get a neck and shoulder rub or just go talk to yourself in the mirror and give yourself some positive <laughs> affirmations. Um, right. But something, whatever that looks like to, to you, you know, we have to do that for ourselves. Yeah, it's funny because even like going back to the meal thing, like I... Um, I, I'm so bad, like I will like skip meals, I, and it typically doesn't affect me, although the older I get, the more it's affecting me, and my body won't let me go. It's just like, no, now. 
but I just started a detox and an Eric cleanse and the same thing. And it's the first one I've ever done and it's 21 days and it's, it's so amazing. Like I am learning so much about myself through this cleanse. First of all, you have to be really committed, right? It, like day one, oh, the first day I started it, we, um, I was with my business coach and she took us all out to dinner at one of my favorite restaurants here. And like everyone around me ordered like lobsters and chocolate tarts and I was just... <laughs> and I was I'll just, have the lettuce with a lemon wedge. <laughs> yeah, and the, like they totally, mi I could eat, but like very specific things. So the kitchen totally misunderstood and like this dish that was put in front of me was just like the most boring thing you've ever seen and I was just like looking around and I was like oh shit this is day one <laughs> like are you kidding me <laughs> but you know I stuck to it and everyone's having their wine and I'm just like oh um but it's really interesting to like I'm so proud of myself to see my level of commitment because that's one thing that I have been wanting to focus on and improve on to see my level of commitment really like shine through and um, for it to actually be easy for me, you know? And um, so there's that, but then there's also like the eating thing. Like I, like I've been, I can't miss a meal. So it's been really good for me to, to teach myself that, that self nurturing. Like I need that because I have to take the supplements that are a part of, so it's just, it's really interesting. Like, like when you put yourself on a goal, whether it's like running a marathon, um, you know, doing a 21 day cleanse, like whatever it is that you put yourself on, like it's so interesting to see where your thoughts go, where your moods go, how you react to certain things to really test your level of commitment. Well, you know, it, we, it circles back, it comes around full circle that really it's about loving yourself first, okay. being your own best friend first before you can be of any service or value to other people. And um, I think part of that is one, saying I'm worthy of abundance and this time and I can give to myself and it's okay to receive um, because the more we nurture ourselves, the more we take care of ourselves, the happier we're going to be. And the more infectious that happiness is to everyone else around us. And um, I think it's wonderful that you, you, you've accomplished that. I'd be happy to talk to you at the end of your cleanse and see how that went. I know. We'll see. We'll see. I'm, I'm finding out, though, that I'm definitely a coffee person. Like, I oh. cannot wait to go back to coffee. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Love um, my coffee. Yeah, I'm, I'm interested, too, to see, like, how I'm feeling, where I'm at at the end of this, and um, really, like, you know, get through this commitment that I set for myself. So, yeah. Um, okay, um, we are almost out of time. Let's wrap up. I've so loved this conversation with you, Thanks. and I've taken so many notes off of your little brilliant sound bites. <laughs> okay. please use them every day <laughs> okay good I will um, and I hope everyone got so much out of this but before we end I want to ask you because I've been asking all of the experts I've been interviewing if you want to give everyone listening in a way of staying on goal staying in um, engaged and committed to their big vision for themselves in like a daily action or some sort of tip that you know they can take with them to really stay aligned with what we're trying to help them do with their visibility and making a bigger difference. I would just say that authentic, going back to authenticity, um, really knowing yourself, you know, mm -hmm. finding yourself and not going out there to try and please everyone else, but just trying to please yourself and, um, also that sometimes we go after the things that we want, but they're not always the things that we deserve. Um, to say that sometimes we go after things that are settling for us. You know, they're not really going to make us happy, but they're, they're things that we, that we think that, they're the only things that we can get. Um, so I would say love yourself, 
Um, be as authentic as possible when you're going out there every day and to be gentle. You know, when you look in the mirror as where everyone's criticizing each other and judging each other and projecting onto each other, every morning and every night before you go to bed, just say, I love you just the way you are. You're perfect, you know? Um, it's incredible the magic that just uttering those words and believing them can bring into your life. Yeah, and that is such a great point. And honestly, say it until you believe it. Yeah. yeah, even if you don't believe it, like, keep saying it, you know, because eventually there's going to be that switch of a light, like, light switch that right. just turns on, and you're like, oh, wow, I finally do believe it. All those other times I was just faking it. <laughs> right. Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> it was like a scene from when Harry met Sally, you know. <laughs> That's what he's having. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I love that. I so love that. Um Okay, Ronnie, talk us through, you have a free gift for everybody, so we would love to hear about that. I do. I have an incredible company called Friend Movement, and we're shifting the conversation from anti-bullying to pro-friendship. And one of the things we're doing is we have a podcast and monthly mixers called Friends with Benefits. And the idea with that is that um, it's incredible all the amazing benefits that come with being a better friend to ourselves and to people that we meet. So for anyone watching this, the scene program that I'm so thankful to be on today, um, if you're watching this, please send me an email at info at friendmovement.com and I will put you on a list. I'm going to send out um, kind of like tips of the trade to being an entrepreneur or an actor or just to being a healthy, happy person. I'm going to send out a little blog style um, uh, piece or an article to you when you email me. Okay, nice. So um, what's the subject line for the email? It's going to be friends with benefits. Okay. So again, just email me at info at friendmovement.com and in the title or the subject, put friends with benefits. Okay, perfect. Ronnie, I don't, <laughs> I don't know how like our paths have not crossed. I feel like you're my brother. Like Everything that you say, I'm like, yes, and the challenges, and be curious, and I'm like, we need to hang out more. <laughs> I would love that. I'm going to go to the beach. Well, I guess it's getting chilly now. Maybe Not we'll that to... chilly. So you're more than welcome <laughs> to come to down. <laughs> but I'm, I'm just like, I love you to death. And I'm so grateful to have even connected with you, um, period. But much less to like have you grace your presence with, um, with us on this interview series. Just so appreciative of you. Well, Thank I you love so you, much. and I'm most humbled, and my love and light goes out to anyone watching this, and I'm an open book, and I love to collaborate and talk with people, so if you've got an idea that you're working on, or you just need some, some guidance or a motivational boost, never hesitate to reach out, because as long as I'm here, you have a friend. <laughs> but I do. <laughs> Perfect. All right. Thank you, everybody. Um, we everyone. really had fun having you a part of this today. So we'll talk to you soon. Bye, guys. Bye.